What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Nurse Bass and welcome to the next video on mastering ABGs. Paid for and sponsored by YouTube, a collaborative effort to not only help you pass those exams and crush those ABG test questions, but also to help you better take care of your future patient. Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast mode. So we've discussed a lot of things regarding ABGs, and we've gone through not only what this tic-tac-toe board means, how, but how to interpret ABGs using it and how to answer test questions properly. So we've gone through some normal ones, whether it's just clear-cut respiratory acidosis or alkalosis or clear-cut metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, or normal. What we're gonna talk about in this one are partial compensations. This is the second type of arterial blood gas question that you can see on an exam. And not only are we going to go through a couple of examples, trial by five, but we're also going to explain what in the heck these partial compensations even mean. So let's dive into it. All right guys, so this is going to be our very first question on partial compensations and let's just dive right into it. Our pH is 7.15. We already know that's the first thing that we look at. 7.15 is less than 735, so it's going to be in our acidotic column. Our CO2 is 60. 60 is well above 45, so that is also going to be in our acidotic column. Now right here from the bat, if you got into the hang of things from those last five questions, you might say, I don't even need to look at the bicarbonate, I already know. What we have here is we have respiratory acidosis but look at every piece of information that you're given. Bicarbonate is 32. That's not normal. That's well above 26, falling in the basic column. So what we're going to do is put this over here in the basic column. So this is important. What we do have here, we do indeed have respiratory acidosis, but it is partially compensated. Now what does this mean? In any given patient, just as we talked about in the early videos in this series, patient may be presenting with respiratory acidosis. They have too much CO2 on board. The example we used was the COPD patient. They cannot blow off all of that CO2. They're holding on to too much. One of the natural compensatory mechanisms that our body has is this metabolic system, this renal system dealing with this bicarbonate. The patient's kidneys could purposefully retain more, more bicarbonate and not excrete it out through the urine. The brain is telling the body we're in a state of acidosis and our lungs are causing it. We need to try and compensate to try and bring us back to a more homeostatic pH level. So how does it do it? The, the brain tells the kidneys, don't pee out all that bicarbonate. Let's go ahead and produce some and hold on to it and release it into the circulatory system so that it can, again, to refresh your memory, bind with those free hydrogen ions, get rid of that acidity, and bring us up to a more homeostatic pH. So that is what partial compensation is. It is the body's attempt, not successful attempt, but attempt at compensating for this acidosis or this alkalosis? That's the first question. Let's go ahead and dive into the second one. So in this example here, our CO2 and our bicarbonate are still the exact same as the previous one. We're still at 60 for the CO2 and 32 for our bicarbonate. However, our pH is now 7.47. So looking at the pH first, 7.47 is above 7.45. So it's gonna go in the basic column. As we previously stated, our CO2 is 60. It's gonna go in our acid column. And our bicarbonate is 32. 32 being above 26, that's gonna go in our basic column. Now, a different presentation of a partially compensated arterial blood gas. CO2 and bicarbonate were the same, but as you can see, we now have an entirely different issue. This is no longer a case of respiratory acidosis. What we now have is metabolic alkalosis, partially compensated. So we have an issue, a dysfunction in our renal system, causing us to be in a state of metabolic alkalosis. And so our body 
just naturally tries to compensate for that by uh, altering our CO2 levels. In this case, by trying to retain and hold on to CO2. Therefore, we have a higher than normal CO2 level. So it's just an important concept to think about when you're talking about compensatory mechanisms and homeostatic compensation, not only for the purposes of these test questions, because ultimately this is what we're doing. This is the field of academia. We're doing this to pass a test. But as I've said at the beginning of almost every video, more importantly, to help you take care of your future patient, because you're not just learning numbers here, you're learning the whys. Why are we partially compensating? What is occurring within my patient down to the cellular level to help me have a better understanding of what's going on in their body to help me better care for them? Sorry, I had to get on my soapbox, but I hope that this is beginning to make sense. We've got three more questions in this trial by five. Let's just go ahead and dive into it. So for our third question, we have a pH of 7.55. That's going to fall in our alkalosis column. And hopefully at this point, you guys are beginning to be able to quickly recognize what columns these are falling underneath. So I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Next, our CO2 is 28. That's less than 35. So that's going to fall in our alkalosis column. And our bicarbonate is 12, which is far less than 22. So that's going to go in our acid column. And so what do we have? We know that we have respiratory alkalosis and we can see that our kidneys are trying to compensate. Hence why our bicarbonate fell in the opposite column from where our pH and our CO2 are. So here we have partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. Let's dive into the next one. In this next one here, we have a pH of 7.3. <clears throat> so our pH is less than 7.35. That's going to go in our acidotic column. CO2 is 34. 34 is less than 35. So that'll go in our alkalotic column. And then our bicarbonate is 20, which is less than 22. That's going to go in our acidosis column as well. So we have partially compensated, because this is on the opposite side, partially compensated metabolic acidosis. Hope this is really starting to make sense, guys. One more in this one. But again, do not skip it because we need to segue into the next video. So for our fifth and final question in this particular partial compensative trial by five, we have a pH of 6.9. I know what you're thinking, like what? That's crazy. I've seen it, so it can happen. <laughs> 6.9, less than 7.35, so we are definitely acidotic. CO2 is 70. Again, you're thinking that's wild. I've seen worse. That's less than 45, so that is going to fall in our acidotic column as well. And our bicarbonate in this case is 28, which is above 26, so that's going to go in our alkalosis column. And so what do we have? That's right, we have partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So I wanted you guys to stick around to watch this one because in this case, we're on, the body is only partially compensating. Yeah, it's putting in an effort in order to compensate for this horrific pH, but it's only partially compensating because our pH is still abnormal. What we're going to dive into in the next video are fully compensated arterial blood gases. Cases in which our patient is still undergoing some form of acidosis or alkalosis, but the body is successfully compensating and is still able to maintain a normal pH. Hence why I said in the first trial by five, just because you have a normal pH does not mean there is not something going on within the patient's body down to the cellular level. Let's dive into the next video. I look forward to seeing you there. We'll make more sense of it soon. It's your boy Nurse Bass and I'll see you there. Peace.